back on with a Nissan and I'm going to try and uh, sort the exhaust and have a look at the airflow meter. I'll go through how I actually change the airflow meter from a uh, CA18 to a SR21 as well so a few people have asked about that. Um, so we'll grab a few tools, get the car up in the air, we'll get started. So I've had a look at the exhaust again and it seems to uh, be leaking from that main join that I put the um, that I put in earlier so I could actually attach the four branch I built and it's also leaking from where the cast iron um, part of the manifold meets the downpipe so I think either the studs have gone on there or the gasket's gone on there so that's something else I've got to have a look at so I'll take the heat shield off and give me a close look at that first of all we'll go through the actual airflow meter this is the SR20 airflow meter it's the same diameter as the uh, CA18. I'll just get this. I printed this offline, and you can see that. Um, so basically, the CA18 from the S13 and the Nissan Sunny ZX is a 65 mil, and you want the SR20 from an S14, which is 65 mil as well. Now there is one which is slightly bigger. I can't remember which one that is, but you have to make sure you get that actual um, same throttle size, throttle body size. Otherwise, the actual wiring doesn't match up because the wiring is an exact match for the uh, SR20. For the other one, it's not; it's slightly different. You can actually fiddle about with it and get it to fit if you wanted to, but this is just basically a straightforward fit. The only problem I had was the actual plug was a completely wrong uh, size. So I, what I actually did in the end is I got three little uh, spade connectors, heat shrunk those onto each wire, and then he shrunk a bigger bit over the top to make my own plug. It's a little bit Heath Robinson, it's not exactly perfect. I'll probably put some tape around that to make sure it doesn't come out, which it has done a few times when I've been uh, messing about with the engine, etc. But it seems to work fine. So basically all you have to do is copy the wiring across. This is only a three pin, where the C 18 is a four pin. So I just copied the wiring across and there's one wire you don't actually use, which I think is wire a yeah so if i go through to this is all online everything of all this description everything's all on on google just putting google images and then all this comes up there you go so you got the c c18 65 mil there's your flow and there's your wires they're all exactly the same yeah i know it's in japanese but you can tell you know the logo is the same logo to that logo so it's obviously the same thing One's your positive, one's your earth, and one's probably your switch or your feed or whatever. So basically, I just followed that, whack those three on, and it works fine, perfect. Yeah, the S15 65 mil is the other way around. But again, you could cobble that together and flip it round. This airflow meter wasn't expensive. Actually, I got this from um, off eBay. I think it's a Chinese copy. So you, you, I gambled a little bit with it, but it seems to work fine. I think it was only probably about thirty pounds, and you know airflow meters can go ridiculous money nowadays, especially for the uh, three hundred ZX jobs. But yeah, it seems to work okay. Yeah, it's a bit plasticky looking, but sticking on top of the hair look fine. So that's pretty much straightforward fit. Just you know, those three wires, the same orientation, three across, perfect. Just whack it in. Make your own little switch up, or you can even get the SR20 plug if you get the pigtail from there. Wire those three wires in, or even the four wires. Definitely, this is, I'm sure, 100% positive this is only a three plug on this actual one. Um, so all I did was just put three wires straight into it. And it seems to work perfect. So, I hope you found that little bit information helpful. If you need any more uh, help on the actual subject, just drop me a message below. So what I'll do now, I'm going to jack the front of the car up, get the front bumper off, it's hanging off anyway because I'm doing the wiring and I've got to uh, repaint it. Get it in the air, see if we can get this uh, manifold off. Still getting a lot of condensation in here, but I think most of it's from this garage door. You can see it on there, look. It's just dripping on there. 
So I think I'm going to get a garage insulation kit and get them on Amazon for about £30. It's like a almost like a sound deadening stuff, keeps the uh, heat in. So I think that might be a, a thing to get while this uh, cold weather's on. Tried sealing the door up a little bit with a bit of gaff tape, but that's not working at all. So I think I'll get the kit. But anyway, I digress. So I'll get the car up in the air. See if we can get the exhaust off. I've taken the uh, manifold off and you can see see why it was leaking. The actual uh, studs are completely sheared. I don't know if it backed off or sheared, so I'll have to just probably drill these out and tap these out and make um, some better studs for those. But I'm impressed with these washers. I saw in a previous video these little um, grip washers that pump to hold the manifold on. They seem to work to treat holding the actual manifold in place. So I may have to use something similar on there as well. So the next job I've got to do from the heater, I've taken the main brace off here from there, is remove this is the joint I put in. So when I made the four branch manifold, I joined it to here. So it's actually still leaking from here. So I think I'm gonna basically cut that joint out and maybe put a sleeve over the top, weld one side and clamp the other side so I can still remove it if I have to. Because um, to buy a new one of these actual downpipes, they're about 400 quid. Um, so I don't really want to do that, to be honest. If I can make this one fit. Yeah, the studs are still on there, look. See on camera. Yeah. So it's threaded into there, alright. Oh, great, right. That's something I can sort. Right, so I'll get this bolt off here, then I'm going to get this into the workshop, see if I can actually. Uh, slice this off. I'll take the centre pipe out as well I think. It's going to be easier to actually do that off. And again, I still got to cut that off haven't I? Yeah, I'll probably take this off to do that. I'll see. But I'm going to get this bit off next and get it in the workshop and have a look at the manifold studs. Probably going to need a new gasket as well I think. Yeah. Nice shot. Okay, cool. Next step. So I'm back in the workshop. I've got the actual down pipe off. And it looks like the studs have actually uh, just backed out, so what I am going to do, I have to get a new gas kick so that is actually uh, knackered completely. So we see you've been blowing through there and burnt it all away. So I'm going to get myself a new gas kick. That's supposed to sit nice and snug in there. Like so. Yeah, so I'll clean all that up, I think, as well. Clean all the actual faces up so it sits nice and flat because it's not at the moment. There's the stood there, look. So it looks like it's actually snapped off. So if I can see if I can get that one out. It's only going to bugger all in there, is it? And then um, I think I will actually wrap the entire thing as well. So what my plan is, is I'm going to cut this end off here and then put a sleeve over the top. I've got a piece of pipe somewhere. Just can't remember where I put it. So, oh there it is. Yeah, so that hopefully that should fit over the top of that and make a little sleeve. Then I cut the other end off and then I get, I probably weld this onto this side, put a U-bolt on that side so I can still take it on and off. So when I do actually get the um, four branch actually fixed or make a new one, I can put that on as well. So I think I'll try and drill these out. You know, tap and dice it out. See if I can't actually tap these out a little bit. I will actually clean that up, I think. Let's get the old um, sander on there as well. Look at that. Bit crispy. Okay, so we'll crack on with that. Okay, so that was fun to actually uh, tap those out, a bit of a nightmare. I had to use bolts in the end, some nice stainless bolts, so I'm just going to slice that one off and then we'll give it a try, see if it fits. I'll just put the cutting disc back on. Like so. 
so I'll just slice this off. I clean all these up with a file. And I think I'll probably have to use some of those same um a bit warm. Those same locking washers that I used last time to try and secure in this seam secure in there. They screwed in and I've um, put plenty of torque on there. Yeah, it fits nice now. Nice stainless nut on there with one of those lock washers. Hopefully that should hold that in place. Okay, so I think I'll find those out now and do those and then I've got to order the gasket. I've cleaned that up a little bit. I just polish it a little bit more, making sure it's all a nice seal. But it feels like it goes in quite nice. So once the gasket's in there, it should make a lot of a difference, I think. And then I'm going to slice off the end of this and try see if I can get that on there. I may even new bolt it on both ends yet, so it gives me a little bit of wiggle room side to side and whatever to make it fit. So I just got a little few slots in it. Get some exhaust paste, new bolt both sides. Might be the easiest option, bit of a bodge job, but uh, until I get a full stainless system put on it, which I want to do eventually, I think it might be all right. So what I'll do now is I'll get the, see if I can find the washers, thread some nuts on there, clean up the threads a bit, and then we'll slice the end of that off. Okay, so I've sliced the uh, little flange bit off. Plan is, I think, to slide put that on there like that. The other side on that end, and a couple of U bolts. These are too small, so I'm gonna have to get in line and uh, order a couple of new ones. But I've also seen some collars, exhaust collars that go on when they've got clamps already built in. So I may, if I can get one the same size, about 65 mil. I'll probably try that first if this length is alright. So I can't go really much longer than that because the flex pipe's here. I don't want to clamp onto the flex pipe when I clamp onto the actual flange itself. So may I go online tonight and have a look? I've got to order a gasket and probably order some U bolts as well. But I'll probably try and order one of those um, brackets first, I think. See if that actual clamp with a pipe built in will do the job. Probably will. We'll see. Okay, so I get online and order those parts and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so it's been a couple of days now and I've actually purchased one of these um, joiner clamps from Amazon. It seems to be working, it's just not quite small enough because this tube's quite distorted now. It's not round anymore, it's sort of like almost like an oval. Um, I was thinking about getting some new bolts to put round it and do it that way and see if I can close it up. But a closer inspection I think I could trim a little bit more metal out the inside because basically it's just like two two uh, tubes and they just close in like that as you close it round so if I if I show on these this one here with the sharpie lines if I trim that right down there and that right down there then put a threaded bolt through it not just a collared bolt like this one it should give me a little bit more room and that should close it up because it's a minuscule amount really there's not a lot in there you can just see a little bit light it's a little bit loose once I've got the assembly paste on there and it's all wrapped as well like I've done with this bit I think that'll um, make it a bit more airtight because it's a fraction in it. So what I'm going to do next then is I'm going to trim those down a little bit more so I can close them in and then I'll put the bolts on them and give it another go. So after much swearing and cursing, that didn't actually work because it wouldn't close up tight enough because this you can see how oval it is actually. You can see how oval the actual pipe's got now. These just would not climb tight enough. So if I went a size smaller, it'd be too small. So this is the only size I could get to actually fit. But I managed to squeeze one of these U-bolts on, so I'm gonna get myself another U-bolt. And I think that would work fine with some uh, exhaust paste in there and fully wrapped. I think that'll um, 
stop it from uh, leaking and keep it joined together. I could weld it on like I was thinking of in the first place, but eventually I do want to actually get a four branch made and put a four branch on it or repair the one I've made already and put that on. So I want to keep it as a joiner. So I think that's going to work. So I'll get online tonight and order another U-bolt. Um, and I think that should do the job quite nicely because that is really nice and secure now. Can't see any air through it. Once there's some assembly paste on there as well, that'll seal it nicely. So, yeah, so I'm quite happy how that's going. A little bit frustrating um, with these actual boss, but they were only the whole thing was only six quid from Amazon. So you know you uh, get what you pay for, I suppose. Uh, as for the gaskets, the gaskets are coming in the next couple of days. They're coming from Germany. I've got a main flange actual gasket, and I've also got the actual gaskets that sit in here as well. So it should give me a little bit more. Uh, seal as well because before it was just that one as you can see that's and it's really crusty okay so uh, wait for the gaskets to come and then we'll go for the next stage actually so a few weeks have gone by now and the gaskets have arrived but it's the wrong size and the other two oval gaskets are also the wrong size so in the end I bought an exhaust gasket sheet so I'm going to make my own gasket, which is what I should have done in the first place, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little piece of A4 paper. I'm just going to fold it in half. I'm going to basically just lay that over the top of there, do like a brass rubbing almost to get the shape. And then I'll make a paper one and then I'll transfer this template onto the actual gasket, cut that out with a jigsaw. And we should be in business to build the exhaust back up, make sure we haven't got any leaks, etc. The pencil. Not difficult to this through the camera, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Right, what is? I think I'll cut those out first, and I'll lay it on, and I get the holes in the exact right place. Just a pair of scissors, trim around it. If you're not used to using scissors, get an adult to help you. Use things a little bit of adjustment. And there, I mean, like that. So what I'll do now is I'll transfer that over onto the uh, gasket sheet, cut the centre pipes out, and get to the Okay, so a couple more days have gone by now. And done a little bit more research about the gaskets and uh, went on the Facebook page, the N13 page. And thanks to Peter on there, he uh, told me I need the round gaskets in here. So I managed to get the correct part numbers for those, which are there. These are just a pattern part. And I uh, cleaned all the uh, channel out and that just sits in there. I'll probably still use that gasket I made as well just to give it an extra seal, a little bit of exhaust paste as well just to give it a, a nice tight seal. So I'll continue cleaning this one out, get the other little o-ring gasket in. So it's just a little composite o-ring that goes in the little channel there when that's cleaned out. So it's paste to do your research that goes in there like that. So I'll continue with the other one and then we'll get this all built back up. And I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. There we go. All back together. I think that should be fine now. I will double check it for uh, leaks when it's all back on the car. What I'm going to do next, I think, is I'm going to clean up the actual manifold face just to make sure I get a nice seal again on there. Um, but I think it looks fine. It's got the new seals inside as well as the uh, gasket I made there, so I think it should be plenty. So all I got to do now is cut off the flange on cut off the flange on the old exhaust so I can slide this one on and use the other new U-clip and then that should be it. I'll probably wrap this bit as well so I've got a little bit of wrap left from when I did it previously so I'll probably go around there just to neaten it up a little bit and finish it off and then we'll get back on the car start her up and see how she sounds. Right so we're all back on the car now as you can see it's all bolted in place it's gone on nice it seems nice and secure I'll show you underneath The actual brace across it's just the standard brace there, replace the bolts of course. Wrapped it further down as well. 
and that's where the join is now that's where the two flanges were before which were always leaking so I cut that flange off and put that um, extension piece across so it's a little bit rough looking but this is only temporary till I get my four branch either fixed or a stainless steel one made so it's uh, as long as it uh, doesn't leak I'll be happy needs to touch in some paint on the bottom of the uh, sump as well that's starting to bubble so I'll sand all this off while it's up in the air and I'll paint all that I think as well but I'll do that off camera probably I'm going to bore you with me just painting um, so what we'll do now is we'll give it a start and see if it looks So I think that was a bit of a success. It's all uh, sounding a lot quieter now. I've got the um, manifold nuts to check after a few days when I've run it around for a, uh, a while, but I can't actually go anywhere at the moment. It's still in lockdown, but once that's lifted, I'll get it out on the road and uh, see if there's any leaks, make sure they don't come back. But eventually I do want to actually get the full branch on that I made. As you can see, it's quite a nice piece. It is still leaking from inside, so I'll cut a hole in the back to try and fix that, so I've got that to fix and I'm going to cut that flange off there as well because that's what was uh, not mating up properly so they'll probably do something similar to what I've done on this but a lot neater, just like a proper sleeve you can slide in so I'd like to run that really, so it just look a lot nicer nice to get it chromed as well at some point look quite cool anyway that's it for a future project so I think the next step on this is to get the pumper Reprepped and painted once the weather gets a little bit drier. I'll put it on for now so I can drive it around for a while and then uh, just a tidy in. Hopefully, get ready for some shows this year. So, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tune in for more content that's coming soon on the Nissan. Little bits and pieces here and there. And I'll see you on the next one.